In today's video, we got the engineers Mr. Smith and Johnson to explain the difference between allowable stress design and load and resistance factor design. And to understand what I'm talking about, let's start from the beginning. Engineers design structures to be suitable for their intended use and to be safe. Not too safe though, because too safe means too expensive. There's a quote I love that goes like this. Anyone can build a bridge that stands, but it takes an engineer to build a bridge that barely stands. And to design these structures, engineers had to come up with design loads and load combinations and to ensure the safety of a structural member they have to make sure that these load combinations are less than the loads that the member can fully support but how much less is the million dollar question? In order to answer this million dollar question, engineers started to pay attention to failure modes, unpredictable material properties, installation mistakes, risks involved constructing a building. They asked the question, what would be the consequences if a hospital located in the city center collapsed? After assessing all these factors, they came up with factors of safety and capacity reduction factors. I'll give you an example. A failure mode associated with yielding of steel reinforcement is relatively predictable because you can see large deformations before it breaks. Therefore, we can use a design factor of 0.8 or 0.9. On the other hand, a failure mode associated with the shear fracture of a concrete member is relatively unpredictable and would result in a brittle failure without any warning signs. Therefore, we should use a lower design factor of 0.6 or 0.7 maybe. And that's when ASD and LRFD come into play. If you're an old school engineer like Mr. Smith and have been working since the 70s and 80s, you're very familiar with the allowable stress design. On the other hand, if you have been in the industry for less than 20 years, like Johnson, you're probably very familiar with the LRFD. Essentially, they're the same but different. Allowable stress design or working stress design uses service loads or non-factor loads against an allowable stress divided by a factor of safety. This factor of safety is based only on the type of loads such as axial moment, shear or torsion. So basically if you're designing a slab with a dead load of 100 PSF and a live load of 40 PSF, one of the load combinations for example would be 100 plus 40 equals 140 PSF and then you assess the design design of bending or shear against a factor of safety. On the other hand, LRFD or limit stage design uses different types of loads to different probabilities of occurrence and degrees of variability. In other words, we are introducing load factors which vary according to the type of load and different capacity reduction factors for different materials. Basically for the same slab example of 100 PSF dead load and 40 PSF live load, in the LRFD, one of the load combinations we would be checking is 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load for strength, which could be shear or bending moment. And then you would be assessing the design against a design factor or capacity reduction factor. Notice that in this load combination, the load factor for live load is around 30% higher than the load factor for dead load. And this is because live load is more difficult to accurately predict than dead load. And that's the basic premise of LRFD. It's a game of probabilities. This video is sponsored by ClearCalx. ClearCalx is an online structural design and analysis software that helps structural engineers save time and produce better designs. The platform offers calculators to design with timber, steel, code form steel, and concrete. And the best part about ClearCalx being cloud-based is all you need to do is go to clearcalx.com and log in. No installation required. Let's have a look inside the platform. First thing you will notice is that they have a standards library integrated to the website where you can find all the Australian standards. So let's say I want to have a look at concrete structures. That's AS3600. There we go. We have full access to the whole AS3600. Now, if you had two projects, create a new project and then add a calculation, you will have the option to choose codes from Australia, New Zealand, US, Canada, and Euro code. We're going to choose Australia, and then we can design all sorts of beams, columns, footings, retaining walls, connections, and much more. And if you click in one of these calculators, 
there will be presets to design specific types of beams which makes the calculations more straightforward. So if you want to save time and produce better designs, ClearCalcs is the perfect tool for you. There will be a link down in the description below and you can start using it for free. Just to give you an example of typical load combinations as per the American code, these ones on the left are for ASD and these ones on the right are for LRFD. For ASD, the load factors are one except for some cases where the loads are reduced to account for the probability of that load happening at the same time of all other loads. For LRFD, different load factors that vary according to the type of loading are applied. Now, if you ask Mr. Smith which method he prefers... Are the good old days. Allowable stress design has been the foundation of structural engineering for a long time. It's a simple and straightforward method that allows the designer to have a feel for how heavily loaded a structure is. For example, if a steel beam has a stress of 40,000 PSI, the designer knows that the beam is loaded near its capacity. This is not evident if a beam has a limit state bending moment capacity of say 200 kip feet. Well Mr. Smith, times have changed. Load and resistance factor design has taken over as the new standard. It's a more robust and precise method that considers the uncertainties in design parameters and factors them into the calculation. We no longer rely solely on experience. We rely on data and statistics. Oh my God, these young people nowadays. Some countries like Australia, the majority of the standards have been updated to use only limit states design or LRFD. However, some of the geotechnical aspects of the foundations are still designed to allowable stress principles. For example, when designing the bearing capacity of a pad footing, the structural engineer will usually get an allowable bearing capacity value from the geotechnical engineer. But in general, in Australia, I don't see many people using allowable stress design anymore. That's not to say that one is better than the other you can still use both methods in America for example however we have to agree that the load and resistance factor design is more popular nowadays due to the factors that account for uncertainty in dynamic loads and if you want to learn how to design a pad footing step by step you should check out this video here and I'll see you there